the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 24. The Lord shewed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil. They cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them an heart to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And as the evil figs which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, Surely, thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes in the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, for they are hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. Chapter 25. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was in that was the first year of Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, That is the three and twentieth year. The word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. And the Lord hath sent you, has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They say, Turn ye again now, every one, from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and to provoke. Provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and an hissing and a and perpetual desolations. 
Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon that land all my words, which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send me to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sore that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me. To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment and hissing and a curse, as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Azah, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod. They call it a remnant then, it's still there considered a remnant. Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon and the kings of Tyrus and all uh, all the kings of Zidon and the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea, Dadan and Tema and Booz and all that are in the utmost corners and all the kings of Arabia and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The God of Israel, drink ye and be drunk, drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on this city which is called by my name. And should ye be utterly unpunished, ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. Those are special people and they just, he's just furious and he's like, that's what I'm doing to you. But to everybody else, I could care less about anybody else. Look what you've already done. I'm telling you what's going to happen. But everybody else, he pro he told them to go prophesy. Every last person on the earth. 
Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall go a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. Whirlwind. It's just some lots of destruction that way. And the slain of the Lord shall be at the day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. See that? See what you see when you go outside and you see this Nancy Pelosi streets that are full of that. See what it's saying here? Those are all those shit piles we see. Those are people that won't be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Howl, ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished, and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. And the shepherd shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. The voice of the cry of the shepherds, and in howling, See, that's worrisome. That's because, what are they trying to do now? I don't know, why are pe Why is NASA involved with an eclipse? What are they trying to do? And they're trying to make it like a, oh, there's solar flares, we have to send out the National Guard. But they could lock down the city any day too, right? See that? And the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. But I tell you what, gets to swimming, everybody. Get to boat jacking and swimming. Mm -mm. If that's what you want, Lord. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and in howling of the principle of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord hath spoiled their pasture. It's like, wow. It's like, that just makes me think. What did the shepherds do? It's like, wow. Do they just go to those parties where they worship things? Like you think the shepherds are like, they're just roaming around constantly. They're not involved with all that, but it's kind of concerning why to me. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and in howling of the principle of the flock. I guess he's just fed up with everybody. And even if there's good shepherds out there, well, first of all, there are no good shepherds. He said there are no prophets. There are nothing is good here. That's like Jeremiah. He's the only one, the only, only, only one. And you think, wow, these, what are they doing, right? But it's already been said that, guess what? Well, because there has to be some good, like somewhere. But he's just had it. We don't. We don't even know if these shepherds even really had anything to do with it. It doesn't matter. The judgment has been done to everybody in the world at this point. He's beyond Judah. He's saying that you can come back in seventy years. Maybe that's why he's even talking about the shepherd a little more, because that's what they'll be doing again in seventy years. Also. But he's just saying, you know, you're just all gone. 
voice of the city of the shepherds, and in howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the loyal the Lord hath spoiled their pasture. Uh oh, yep. I don't know. So they're gonna, they're gonna all hear the Lord howling, and then the people are gonna hear the shepherds howling because he left at their pastures. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He hath forsaken his covenant, his covert. He hath forsaken his covert. I think that means his cover. Um, as the lion for their land it's, is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. Oh, okay, so you see that? Now that makes sense, right? Is everybody blaming God for all this stuff? And then you're like, well, no, um, it was the people were being pretty bad. And then it's like, yeah, but God, why would God do that? Why wouldn't God fit? Well, it says right here who he's blaming. Not who he's blaming. It says right here who the blame goes to. He hath fors forsaken his covert as the lion. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor. One, so it's because of the kings, the, um, the bad priests, the lying prophets, like, who are just dreaming and making up stuff to get money or just to get notoriety or just to keep just bothering people. Tell him, don't worry, everything you're doing is okay. Keep up the adultery, good work. Keep, keep up all the alcoholism. You know, here, do you want some more wine? We, we know you have just been wallowing in drink. Let's give him some more wine. He's been drunk for two years straight. Let's give him some more wine. The priest says, let's, you know, like stuff like that. So it's not just about the Lord. These are the two reasons. Because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. Well, it doesn't, you know what? It doesn't say his fierce anger. They're not talking about God right here. Because it's not a capital H. Let me figure out what they're saying. They're not talking about God. He hath forsaken his covert as the lion. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. It's the anger the fierceness of the oppressor's anger. That's where I see it. They're not, they're not, they're not saying both are to blame. They, this is blaming a hundred percent the oppressor. But then the, the line before it, so now I'm confused at, it's 37 and 38, if the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Okay, that's clear, right? He did it. He hath forsaken his covert as the lion. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. It's kind of weird because it doesn't say his in capital H. I think they are blaming the people a hundred percent here. I take it back. It's not they're blaming the Lord. It's not they're blaming the oppressor. And because of the Lord's anger, they're just blaming the oppressors, the priests, the people, everybody. That's how it seems to me. I don't know. I'll try to look that one up. That was a long chapter.